Jesus saw them as they fought. When the spirit was so high, the lightning was so high. And I said I have to be so careful. Because I don't even remember this. But that is where I stand with the Satan was. That is why he was chased. So I have to walk carefully as I walk on my salvation with fear and trembling so that I reach there. If heaven is going to be occupied by one person, me, I will be sent you there. Amen. Praise the Lord. I work in Nakaseke, the pastor has already told me, in the village. That is where I work from. 
That is where God gave me work. I'm a teacher. Me, I'm a secondary teacher. Tell your neighbor this lady is a teacher. And she's not ashamed of that. And that is a very proud teacher. And I was called to teach. Tell your neighbor. Why are you telling your children that I don't want any teacher among you? You want some professions of yours. Those that shout. If a child tells you they want to be a teacher, you tell them you're going to make us so poor. For us, we are teachers that are proud to be teachers. No person, no profession, no profession. The Lord has given souls unto us as the teachers. Every day we have souls. You send them unto us and we work on them the way we want. Ask your neighbor, where does your child go to school to? Because some of you are born again. But some your children go to Saint so and so. SDA schools, Muslim schools. You gave your child there to those teachers. You gave unto them with their wisdom, their souls, and their inner man. You all gave them to them. Those of Saint so and so to train them. That has reached the bottom. Has it reached the bottom? Ask your neighbor. You're looking for a D1. So you take them to the other school. There are things you recommend in those schools. Okay. But if you give back to a child, look for a Christian school and those who are still true. I know it's not only Stever High School that is still true. There are so many others out there and take your child there. Let them be trained biology. But when also their spiritual life is tackled, because when biology has no more meaning, after putting off the flesh, the spirit is going to remain standing. So they at senti so and so and took them. What are they feeding them? What are they feeding their inner man? I didn't come to talk about parenting. But I work in Nakaseke. After the bishop had rested, I opened up a foundation to keep his legacy. Foundation Apostle Stephen Sentuma Foundation. I call it Apostle Stephen Sentuma Foundation. In it is where I work out other different things. Because I found out that his lineage. Still benefits many. Which are the Savanji? Left a foundation. Yaliko Musingi. 
upon which we are still standing. Praise the name of the Lord. Upon the foundation of the message of the inner man, the inner man ministries stand. So I opened up a foundation and I work within the foundation and whatever that I am doing, I am doing in the foundation, praise the name of the Lord. I still work on his messages and post them on, YouTube, on the YouTube channel of Apostle Stephen Sen from our foundation. Foundation and also on the Facebook page. Facebook page. I still write and reprint his books. And people still buy. I even completed one he had not completed. That one of humility. A wombe is meekness. Uh, and uh, I launched it, put it on Amazon. Actually, all other books of Bishop Senfuma are still on, um, are there on Amazon. So wherever anyone is, you can download, you can pay and download and read the message of the inner man. And you read the message of the calling gifts and ministry. And read the message of the law and the grace. And read the message of humility. And all other books, spiritual wounds and remedy. Praise the name of the Lord. Within the foundation, I am still writing. I have, I have just finished my own book called The Beautiful Scars. I was not going to come in this conference because these days are very busy for me. For next Saturday, I will be launching this very book. And I will also be hosting Single Prayer Convention. So this Saturday was very close and I had so many opportunities to go and minister here and there. Actually, I want to minister and arms. But I decided to come because of the theme of the conference. When I say the theme, I said I'll just give you the first one. I'll just go and I'll be the first one. I, I, I thought I was the first one, but that Pastor June was already here. I'll be the first one. I made my small brick. And the others will come and, and do the bigger part. Praise the name of the Lord. My book is, is called Beautiful Scars. And these days I put on like this. Praise the name of the Lord. Because Kumanga in the wilderness. There are wounds that we get while in the wilderness. But when we have survived, when we jump through out of the wilderness, the ones which were wounds, they are scars in the wilderness. You can pick some beautiful things out of your scars. Out of your homes. Praise the name of the Lord. I have walked in the wilderness for quite a long time now. As I was entering the wilderness, I didn't know I was entering. I was just walking like any other person. Little did I know that I am entering a very dangerous zone. I don't know where I am at, but at least now there are things that I have learned. I can talk about a beautiful scar because of some of the things that I have been picking in my wilderness. I don't know when my wilderness will end because they are 
wildernesses that will never end. Not all of you will get married. Not everyone will give birth to a child. Not everyone will be rich, will get rich. Being in the wilderness is a circumstance of being in a situation of lack, of pain, of shame, of nakedness. Some wildernesses stop. Some don't. Because not all of us will achieve all that pertains to life. As others are getting married, walking down the aisle, kicking their gowns, you will forever mourn. Because you may not come to that place. It is very incumbent upon us, the pastors, to tell the truth. Not all of you. You will forever wish if I am the one kicking the gown. That one goes. The big ones go. The ugly ones go. The illiterate go. The short ones go. The poor ones go. The young ones go. You wait for your day. In vain. You should understand. There is that wilderness. And you should know how to survive. And I am not a prophetess of doom. Because even those very, very bad circumstances that have happened to you, I never spoke to you. Not everyone. We should know and know how to survive. If for you all that you have all the time is rent for this month and food for today, how are you going to survive in that wilderness? While others have dustbins that have a lot of flies because they have thrown so much food. For you, you're looking for food for today and rent for today. Year one, year two, year three, you marry. The Lord increases food with the wife. And it is only enough. You give birth to one child, the Lord increases food for another child. You never have extra. You look around, ask yourself, will I ever buy a plot? Will I ever do this? Will I ever do this? In such a circumstance, in that wilderness, the heavens, Expects you to serve. One of the things that killed the children of Israelites within the wilderness was grumbling. First Corinthians 10 from 1 downwards, you read. Grumbling, comparisons. We are all in different wildernesses. Maybe let me soften it. 
Maybe some of you are out of some wilderness. When you read the, about the children of Israel, they went through so many wildernesses. So maybe you're entering a certain wilderness. Maybe you have gotten out of a certain wilderness. So you feel a little bit. You can sing, he has done good things for me. Some are entering. Some are in the middle. Others are getting out. It doesn't matter. Why so we are still on earth? Those things will happen. Whichever level you are at, you will have a wilderness. And let me also put this across. The more the Lord requires things of you, the more he has a case with you, the more will be your wilderness. The harder. The hotter. Because the wilderness is a training ground for the Lord. Most of the ministers of God in the Old Testament they visited Egypt. It is a dry land. The more anointing you want, the more you will be tried in pain, in scarcity, name it. For the Lord uses vessels that are tried. And he We go through wilderness. We need an experienced person. We don't want words. We want anointing that is from experience. That said, Job, we know we have read. Yes. Hey. That said, Paul, we know we have read. We need experience. Do you really understand? My situation. Or you are just reading for me, Job. I was so read about it. But I'm dying. When the hand that comes and tells a barren woman, you will surely give birth. There is courage. Than if I came and told a barren, a barren woman that you will, you will surely give birth. What comes through your mind? Do you, you have five? You don't know what it means. And indeed, I don't know. There is an anointing that comes. I've had jump with experience. What the Lord has taken you to. Sometimes I pity people who just say, Please pray for me. I get what you have. Where will you get it from? Do you know the things I have gone through? Some things that I say and touch people, I have literally gone through them. Will you also partake the experience? Now or now be it Surviving in the wilderness. It doesn't matter how hot. How hard. Can you also bring to this to your face? You are not the first one. Sikwa sose. You will not be the last one. Whichever thing you are going through, where you are crying for no good reason. You are crying for no good reason. Should I so You are shouting for no good reason. Because you are not the first one. People have gone through stuff. People have gone through. I want to buy some to be injured. It is a and some of us, when you speak to us, we just laugh at you. Because we have more sorrow than you do. But we have more sorrow than you do. But 
we are surviving in the wilderness. Na wana wana dongo. Those of the world sang, but don't show us your sorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. When I read the, 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 the journal of the Israelites, when someone was reading, it is the Lord. Mokama. It, it was the Lord. Mokama. Who took them in the wilderness. Okay, let me bring it closer. Can't you send me Matthew 4 1. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God led Christ into the wilderness. Sometimes, people be like, every problem you approach, you go for spiritual warfare. And the Holy Spirit led Christ into the wilderness to be tempted. As far as I have read my Bible, and my pastors have told me, there is no wilderness that is for the devil. But in the wilderness, there is testing. Both from the devil and from Christ. Should we read to some? Or why should we just talk? Or why should we just I'll read quickly. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord sought to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way for these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandment or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to anger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know, that he might make you know that a man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by the word which proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garment did not wear out, on you, uh, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. And she can give it to you now. She can give it to you now. Those of Uganda just follow. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord led you into Wajah. For how many years? What was his motive? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I told you I am a teacher. Not a by <laughs> minister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Test you. Ham you make you hang angry. Now to test you to see what is in your heart. Will you really obey my commandments? When I take you there in your canon. When I release my anointing upon you. When will you really survive the anointing? Oh, after getting the anointing, you will step on us. Will you survive the anointing? He takes you there to humble you. He causes you to be angry. To make you know man does not live on only food. But because of the word that proceeded from the mouth of 
the Lord. Na yo mwabu nchikama chifa mkama waka katonda. The Lord. Mkama. Takes us in the wilderness. Atutuwa na mudungu. With a purpose. Nechige nerirua. The time of luck. Akasena kukulu. Time of scarcity. Akasena kukulu. Time of pain. Akasena kukulu. Time of sorrow. Akasena kukulu. Time of tears. Akasena kama zika. Is not a time. Sike kasena. To hate. Okuchawa. Fenano kichawa. You hate all of us. Kukulanga tetuwa kujukira. Because we didn't remember. Kukulu yene naku. You have sorrow. Nekani seju. And that church. Jalari naku agara. They don't have love. When I was okay, they were all alone. But when I got problems, they didn't come to me. 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 They Oh, WhatsApp status is what we like. The status is you put on WhatsApp. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. People love you when you. Those on that side, you are good. Those signs show that you fell a long time ago. Because the Lord expects you. Come on, come on, come on. In that time, Moka say na ako, O kumse mera. To get closer to Him. O kuige mira kirobiye. To learn His commands. O kwate chigambo che. To get hold of His word. O kumu kiriza. To believe in Him. O kumu tunuli la. To him. Agama Isaiah 44:22. Agama Isaiah. Look unto me, all you ends of the earth, and believe. Ena, mubere balamo. And believe, mubere balamo. In the wilderness, there is no provision. When you look, all the way, you will not find anything. There is nothing. There is no shelter. You only look at God. The Bible says He is the author and the finisher of your journey. What I love about God when you decide to look unto Him in the wilderness, He is ever. It doesn't matter whether you feel his presence or you don't feel his presence. He's there. It's up to you to choose to grumble and complain and lament because of bitterness. Because in the wilderness, people become bitter. They come from the place of being angry. They hate. They get And they become bitter. Because they have gone through pain. You have failed. You have not picked. You're going to go around in the wilderness. That is what my God does. When you fail to understand. Because he is put you there. To humble you. There are stones. Precious stones. In the wilderness. You ought to pick. Are a great weapon when you get out of the wilderness. Amen. Great weapon. Great weapon. Great weapon. Out of the wilderness. There is that anointing that comes out of the wilderness. But will you survive? Our key scripture. It is Isaiah 2, Hosea 2.14. Hosea 14. It says, Therefore, behold, I will allure you. This is the Lord saying. And you know the, the Lord 
He does it with love. I will allure you. He causes you to follow him. And I will bring you into the wilderness. That says the Lord. And you are Bible too. Bring you into the what? Into the what? But in the wilderness, I will speak comfort. Now you get a queen picture. When the Bible says, "Be still and know," Bible be a matter of time. That I am the Lord. Those are moments when you don't have a solution for what you are going through. When you have no answer. Because we speak a lot. We panic. When it looks like we run this way. Call this one and the other. You can no longer help yourself. Until when you reach a point when you That's when the scripture comes and says, Be still. And that I am the Lord. Be still and know. When you are still, and you say, Lord, that is Lord. still voice of His that speaks comfort. And you get a woman will speak to you. And surely you may remain in the wilderness. But when you have peace in your heart, yeah. but when you have strength to face tomorrow, yeah. when you have energy to do what you ought to do, sometimes people be in the wilderness, they give up their responsibility because they were meant to They even don't know the keys to the wilderness. Everyone enters the wilderness. And so came. He doesn't even remember where they put money. Have you seen those people out uh, The Bible says, Bible in Gamba, Proverbs 24 10. When you faint on the day of adversity, your strength is small. Your strength is small. When do we measure our spiritual inner strength? In the times of trial. How do you fight? When you are tried. When you are lowered down. Go take it down when see. you are despised. Go Denied what belongs to you. Go How do you find? That's when we can know whether you are spiritual or not. Okay. Okay. If you're able to pray while walking here for three hours, we can say this person is spiritual. But you have to service After the service, if you remain behind, we can say that you're spiritual. But after stepping on you, we want to see what you do next. That will inform us surely. Whether you're spiritual or you're just praying usually for no good reason. I don't know I'm just speak what I'm saying. After I'll go in the wilderness. The Lord can speak to us comfortably. Think about Mesach, Abednego, Shadrach. In the furnace of fire. 
Mumuliro with the other fourth man. Nori omusajja wakuna. They were talking to. Gwemani mokena na hii. In the furnace of fire. Mumuliro wako. What was happening in the fire? Checha nchigena masu mumuliro wako. Indeed the fire was there. Omuliro wali wawe wawo. But there was another in the fire. Na hii wali wawo mulala. Who was speaking comfort? Elayakele mirembe. To the three. And the fire did not even touch the hair of their skin. Because they chose. You see that scripture. It shows that we Sometimes we quote it differently. That whether he rescues us or not. No. There was no whether he, he, he saves us or he doesn't save us. No. There was whether he does not save us. We shall not worship the idol. Even as a fire, if they had died, if he did not save them from the fire, they would have died. But they said, even if he doesn't save us, we shall not worship the idol. And the fire began. There are those fires. They, they are those wildernesses which we go through because we have failed, we have refused action, we have refused to obey the commands of the devil. Yes, it Yes, it Now, we are talking about the fire. Now, we are talking about Yet the Lord is also targeting at the same point to see whether you will obey His command. I think I don't know about the Damatekan. Nay, no more, you know, you are forbidden the Lord's commandments, but they are also lighting up the fire. It doesn't take the fire away. Our Lord is not a son of man. There is a scripture in Isaiah that says, Isaiah 54, that his thoughts are very far from our thoughts. He thinks differently. He prepares differently. That is why for us, faith. A demonia faith is to follow him. It's not to sway away. Sick way, but remaining with him as those who have no understanding. So that we don't bring our understanding. Not to bring our understanding. Praise the Lord. Let's follow him. Just follow. Because he knows. There is one, two, three. Now. Now. Now me. One. Now. One three talks about the will of the Lord. That it goes through will wind. Now we the Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquire his ways. The Lord has his way in the. Hmm? Read together with me. In the will wind. 
Eh? And in the what? Which way do you want to go through? Whose way do you want to go through? The one of the Lord goes through. And he. And after it went through fire. If you see that whatever you do just goes you might be walking through the way of the enemy. You just don't go through any fire. Something is wrong somewhere. This is normal life to a born again Christian. To go through a wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to run because time is fast spent. I'll just say one thing how to survive in the wilderness. Have the word of God. Read the word of God. Practice the word of God. In the wilderness. I remember when I was going through the wilderness. When I I think it, it's a it's me. I could no longer read my Bible. You know, sometimes when I want to quench the things that disturb my mind, I read my Bible. I read my Bible. I read my Bible. I read my Bible. I don't know whether I am like you. Because sometimes you may be reading the Bible. The, the mouth is reading the Bible. But the mind is, is thinking something else. So I get my Bible. I read it while I am shouting. And I am walking. Until the voice of the word overpower. The voice of my thoughts. I But there was a moment when I could not even do that. Because it was too much. And then I met my pastor. And I uh, and you know, how I don't know, I am just in thoughts. And he told me, and so, I am in most cases I am crying, I am crying. Uh -huh. Then after crying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what is going to happen to me. This is too much for me. I don't know what that already requires of me. Are you reading your Bible? I said I cannot. See, now how are you going to survive? He told me you're going to die. In this wilderness. You're going to die. You cannot read your Bible. You are just going not to survive. Told me you have to read the Bible. When you cannot read the Bible, you read the Bible. When you feel you cannot read the Bible, you read the Bible. You read the word. He told me nothing is going to quench the 
fire. And actually, you don't know how the fire is going to be quenched. Continue to read the Bible. One of the things how we survive in the wilderness is guarding ourselves with the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. It is the greatest weapon. The greatest weapon. When you feel like you need to share your issue with many people, before you physically go, go to your Bible. We are just, we are, in these few minutes we are remaining with, we are just going to go through one chapter. And in that chapter, we are just going to pick on certain lines. As these people, our forefathers, who are going through wildernesses, they never gave up on the commandments of God on the word of God they were never swayed away this is a chapter that I read and read and read and I always read Psalms 119 Zaburi Chikumi Kumi means to read that psalm Chitwa Ida Chikanga Sando Kusoma Zaburi but you, you, you have it in your mind. It is a long psalm, so you don't want to read it. But you can just spend those 30 minutes on WhatsApp. Just replying a high, praise God. Just replying a high, praise God. Just just replying those messages you reply. And before you know an hour you have spent just looking at your phone. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Verses 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. In the wilderness. Have the word of God in your heart. Because the word of God will always be telling you what to do and what not to do. When your bitterness has gone so high, when your sorrow has gone so high, when you are mocked so much, the word of God will stand before you and tell you Romans 12 of 21 do not pay evil for evil pay, give good for evil your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against verses 23 princesses also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. They have spoken about you. There is too much to gamble. churches. When again to speak a lot. And the Lord will ashamed you. When those marriages spoke about that they divorced when they are together back. The Lord will ashamed you. I'm not going any further. But your servant meditates on the statutes. Now you when it's now for me it is a kubilagiro. I hear the words, but me in my mind, I meditate on your word. 28. 
My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. When you feel heaviness, where does strength come from? I know. I know you don't want to read the Bible, but that is the medicine. Have you ever felt like you're carrying the whole world on you? David has said, in those days I get my strength from your word. 42. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me? When for you, I trust in your word. When you, when the man is choked, the man will be on fire. Those who abuse you, what do you reply? Those who abuse you, what do you reply? David has the word of the Lord in his heart. Or you just reply them as your heart says. You are reproached. Over me, what? But. It will give you the right answer. Verses 15. This is my comfort. In my affliction. For your word has given me life. Hey. Also, resurrection is good. When you are afflicted, you need the word of God because it will comfort you and it will give you life. 55. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I'll keep your law. In the night, it means the terrible times. When you see time going by, all the things you thought of having when the night was coming, but when the night has come, David has said, now I sit down for saga and saga. I will not be swayed. I will hold on to your laws. That is his word. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 61. The cords of the wicked have bound me. But I have not forgotten your one law. I have not when the enemy surrounds you so much, you forget your God. You forget what you're supposed to do. When you feel so afflicted, some people say, Oh, you are so afflicted. Do you think when you got born again, we became foolish? Do you hear that statement? You despise us because you know we are born again. David has said, Even if the enemy surrounds me with his ropes, I will hold on to the word of God. I don't believe it. Praise the name of the Lord. That is 61. Praise the name of the Lord. 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now that I have been afflicted, I do what? I keep your word. In the wilderness, that is where we get hold on to the word but here as you move the way you want no one speaks to you 
Yeah. Just speak the way you want. Yeah, yeah, gala, you, you do what you feel like doing. The Lord says, let me take you through the window. And you get hold of my Seventy-one. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. That I may learn your statutes. Those of us who want to go to heaven. But those who don't want to go to heaven, they are affliction. They, are gonna, they don't want affliction. affliction. Whenever they see affliction, they have their guns. They just fire. Those of us who are going to heaven, we just say this. Even if we are stepped on, we are not. Even if we are afflicted, we are First Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Paul says what's there? We are not perplexed. We are not left. Even if we are crushed. Even if we are crushed. Even if we are crushed. David says because I went through affliction because I went through the affliction now I hold on to your laws you know that gospel has no amendment I also don't want to know because I wanted to reach deep down there and it settles. And begin looking in your situation from the back. And you ask the Lord, what are you teaching me in this? Not there when you're just... My husband is the late. He used to preach the gospel. And we have it in the series. Goodness that is hidden in evil. It helped me. Affliction. My soul faints for your salvation. But I hope in your word. Now I have read this chapter. This chapter. Go back and read it. David says in this chapter, Awe. like he commits himself. Awe. If whatever happens, I will delight in your word. I will delight in your statutes. Eight six. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. They, were like they almost made an end of me on earth. But I did not forsake your precepts. They were like a lion now. They are going to see what me. Banji ganya awatari nsonga. We onyambe. Babola koka tono. Banzi ki ize kongsi. Na ye nesireka bila ginobyo. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I cannot forsake the law of the Lord. When a certain lights up the fire seven times, I would see chocolate like a tone. Ninety two, ninety three. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. If I didn't have the Bible, 
I reached a moment when I cannot pray. But I had also discovered that whichever prayer I want to pray, David has written it in his Psalms. So I would read the Psalms 24-7. Whichever word I want to tell the Lord is just there in the book of Psalms. Buli kwe chowulira, obo uli nanga kwa tuga, na uli na ya wena gamba kama, buli nanga kwa tuga. Whether you feel like you're being strong, obo uli nanga alipo magombe, na uli na wani kanda, na wena mna mjuombe jesu kiri ze choro. David has already written with me. Everything in the wilderness you want to tell the Lord, David has written about it. Amen. 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 David has written about it. Amen. 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 You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. For they are all over with me. Whatever they have you ever been there when your enemy brings out a new strategy? Oh, I'm speaking among, among the angels. So these things happen to me. When people think that you are over how to away. And you bring out something and everyone's like, For the word of God makes me wiser than my enemy. Makes me wiser. Do you remember where the Lord says that maybe the other thing was not enough? Allow me to touch the devil. The devil which tells God. Because he saw that I was standing at the table. Satan doesn't understand. When I was expecting to curse God, to get angry, to get angry. Over after getting angry, what do you do next? The Bible says, the Lord is always there. Where are you? Because he goes after you. So he remains. When his words are his words are When you feel you're tired, you come back to him. 110. The wicked have laid a snare for me. Yet I have not strayed from your precepts. But yeah. this baby, yeah, 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 yeah. he had a secret. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a secret. 141. I am small and despised. Yet I do not forget your precepts. 43. Trouble, 143. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me. Yet, your commandments are my delight. Trouble and 
trouble and anguish. Yet I don't forget your commandments. One hundred and fifty one hundred and fifty three. Consider my affliction and deliver me. For I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your word. According to your word. It is all in the word. Revival. It is all in the word. One hundred and sixty one. Princess persecute me without a cause. But my heart stands in awe of your word. One hundred and sixty five. Great peace have those who love your law. And nothing causes them to stand. So Tevani Ko Chile Sitaza. Let's finish with that verse. Great peace have those who love your law. Abaga la matika go by name in the ninja. Nothing. Completely nothing to worry at the causes them to stumble. For the word of God is a firm foundation. Soak your roots in the word of God. Be established in the word. Nothing will move you. The word of God, even in the wilderness, it speaks life. You have the word of God, you have everything. How to survive in the wilderness? Read the word, meditate in the word, work in to the word. Nothing, completely nothing. Yet the money will ever shake you. May the Lord bless you. May we stand up on our feet. I want to invite you on Saturday. Come and join me as I sing my prayers. They may also be our prayers. Now it's in Amen. Amen. You may close those eyes. I'll just say a short prayer. Heavenly Father, this is what we have shared. We know that it comes from you. Help us, Lord. As we are sojourners of this planet Earth, but in our troubles, in our afflictions, we may hold on to you. We may hold on to your word. Help us get time with you. Now in your word, to meditate in your word. Cause each one of us to sit and read and may your Holy Spirit open our understanding that your word will be light in Psalms 119, you have said that at the hearing of your word comes with light. Light to our soul. The hearing of your word brings life. May you bring life in our dying bones. Bring life 
Let our namo in our lives. Our life. It's not enough without you. Without your life. We need your life. Life that is hidden in the world. The Bible says, In the beginning, there was the word. Life was in the world. And everything that was created, it was by the word. May your word create peace, create joy, create calmness, create rest, create hope in our dying souls. May your word be life to us. We love you so much. In Jesus' name.